So welcome to Mental Wealth TV. I'm Emmy Golding, Director of Psychology for the WMHI, and I'm here with Peter Diaz, CEO. Hi. And today we're talking about how to survive living and working from home together with your family. This is something that's come up a few times in our training courses and definitely in conversations with people around the world who are now in that interesting position of being at home with their family. It's not only relevant for people that work together now, but we see a lot of people retire later on yes. and then they spend all the time together and they don't have the skills that they could have used a lifetime to develop mm -hmm. in order to make those retirement years a lot more pleasant. Their relationship fails yeah. because they don't know what to do with each other. For us, a bit of disclosure that's not new. We've been working and living together mostly from home for the last 12 years, so we are married. Uh, so from a personal perspective, there's um, tips and strategies that we can share that have been helpful for respecting your DNA. Respect is an important component. Personally, I enjoy working together with you. There are certain times where we can have really <laughs> um, creative discussions. and creative <laughs> discussions and there's a lot of emotion and, and passion behind it. We can have arguments, but we have learned the techniques on how to unravel that and work for us. The creative process might not be fun, but what we come out with yeah. later, it's really worth it, yeah. you know? So we have to both learn to respect what comes out of those yeah. interactions. Yeah. And that reminds me of one thing yeah. that is very important, is leave politics outside yeah. of your relationship. Don't bring ideology in. Yeah. This is not a time to be a chauvinist or a feminist or, I don't know, a communist Any other -ist. or <laughs> anything with an ist, yeah. you know? This is you and me. Sometimes we allow politics, we allow ideologies to seep into yeah. our relationship yeah. and then you have to fight. Yeah. Because ideologies are not fair. Mm. They're just ideologies, they're ideas. We like different things. Amy is the structure person. She's the one that comes up with the lists and the structure and, that, and that's her forte. Mm -hmm. I'm the child of the universe person. I collect information from wherever it is and I bring it together and I do the magic and there we have a direction. Respecting what works best for each person. That was an important shift yeah. because we, we spent a lot of time saying, hey, why don't you do it this way? Mm -hmm. And why don't you do it this way? And that, that of course, a lot of conflict in the beginning, but then eventually with a lot of coaching, yes. <laughs> with a lot of coaching. So we were smart enough to go and get therapy when we needed. Mm. And uh, that's something I really um, uh, recommend to people, go and get therapy or, or, or coaching, relationship coaching, say. maybe therapy yeah. in this case, a lot of people, but you know, relationship coaching where they, they can teach you what are the, the ways of communicating mm. between you that is going to help the partnership along. Mm. Don't make the classic mistake of not getting professional help yeah. until it's too late. Yeah. And I get it, it's gonna cost money and counseling is not cheap, coaching is not cheap, but I guess, so guess what? Worth it. Divorce is even more expensive. So just fight for your relationship. Not only can you save your marriage, can you have a better relationship? Ladies, you get to talk about things in a much deeper way, which I know that usually women like that. Guys, you get bonking points. That's also very <laughs> oh good, goodness. you know, and it, it works all over, <laughs> you know, in every single way that you can think of, it works. But it also works in the sense that it benefits also your business. It benefits your kids, yeah. it benefits your families, it yeah. benefits your communities, whatever yeah. it is. It's win-win all around. Your relationship comes first before mm. the business. We never have arguments at work that come into the bedroom. Now, the business is the secondary part. Remembering that that's business. This is this is something that we're trying to work out and it's, and it's not a personal attack. Don't use your leverage in the relationship ever to get your partner to do something that they don't want to do. Sit down and say, well, how are we going to structure this? Who's going to do what? So what we have done over the years that has been very useful mm -hmm. is to have very defined job roles. Yeah. 
If it's your decision to make, you make it. If it's my decision to make, I make it. So working together in the same business, that's yes. like you're that's in right. charge of accounts, you're in charge of marketing, you're in charge of yeah. administration, etc. And the same thing goes though in the household as you're reviewing, all right, we now have a completely different living situation where we're both at home all day and perhaps the kids are as well. Who's gonna do what? It's team dynamics, isn't mm. it? And this applies both from the working angle, but also from just how you're going to structure things in your household. You know, what's my most productive hours of the day? Now that I'm working from home, I've got more flexibility, but do I work best in the mornings or the evenings? Can one person handle being with the kids for eight hours in a row without pulling their hair out? Or do we need to split that shift and, you know, take four hours each and divide it up? But you need to have those conversations about how are we gonna make this work best for us and our family. It's about learning what works for each mm -hmm. um, and then respect that. It's important to be able to compromise as you're meeting each other's needs in terms of how you work best and, and function together. But that compromise isn't a sacrifice for the other person. No. It's a compromise for the forward movement of the team. And you know, at the end of the day, this is an opportunity to learn to work in a loving environment mm. and to also mature, mm. grow and show love to the other person, but also love for the relationship. There will be a lot of people willing to give you advice yeah. as to how you should live your life. Yeah. Don't listen to that. <laughs> Just, you know, work out what works for the both of you. Yeah. What is practical? What is the loving thing to do? What is, what is the honoring thing to that relationship? Yeah. And then keep honoring the relationship and run your life from there. Yeah. You know, run your business from there. And your business have very clearly defined titles. Titles are very important. You're the director of psychology. You know exactly what that means. I'm the CEO. I know exactly what that means. And there's a respect mm -hmm. of that. All the, I guess, emotional responsibility to land on that person who's typically the rock, so to speak. But they can have bad days too. It's, you know, over mm -hmm. the course of 18 months, there's, there's stresses too. So sometimes you have to be able to flip that and say, right. my, my partner's not having a good day right now. I need to just leave them, you know, or and come back to it later. Or I need to be the one to step up and support them right now. And, and that's okay too. Uh, so what about kids? The more kids you have, the greater level of complexity you do have. Mm -hmm. uh, if they're going to school, at least they leave you to be and do things while they're yeah. at school. Yeah. If you're in lockdown and they can't go to school, then you've got that added complexity. Yeah. But again, I think the principle of the relationship being the number one thing yeah. can help in yeah. this. Because of that is so stressful and because they didn't demand so much attention that there has been the tendency for people to use the iPads, use the devices, use the screen. Um, and I think that's okay to an extent because if you're pulling your hair out crazy and you're gonna take it out on the people around you that you love the most, then that's not a good thing. But at the same time, we do know the negative impact that that can have on kids and you do see the behavior escalate when they've had too much screen time. So you kind of, I mean, it's like an addiction, really. Mm. Um, and so you need to what do you keep that in mind. And, and we've had to wean ours off off of his habit for, wow. you know, at different periods when we've, it's been a bit too much lately, you're gonna have a screen-free afternoon or a screen-free day. That will make your life easier. So three main points for today is respect each other's DNA. So the different work styles, different needs for space and how they use time differently. Number two, divide up your responsibilities, make it clear who's leading what parts of work or home life. Um, it's not political, it's teamwork and don't micromanage. And number three is the relationship comes first. So make the time to connect regularly, to communicate, to have these conversations. Be playful, be humorous, yeah. be loving, be kind, be generous. Yeah. Love it. Good tip. We hope you liked it. Please let us know in the comments. Give us a like. Make sure you subscribe if you haven't. <laughs> and let us know whatever other topics or questions you have about mental health, well-being, resilience, emotional fitness. And we wish you all the best and we love you all. Bye now.